if you can put it in a little jar here. Hello guys and welcome back to the Shin Han Tank Pro League, SCPL for short, this is round two. Uh, it's the group stage and it's week one of seven. And I'm joined here by Cadenzi and Rapid uh, off to the left of my screen. I think it's, it'll that's be to the me. right though. Yeah, that's right, because everything's, everything's back. It so is. It's just a picture of me, it's not actually me. Right now. It's like one of those Harry Potter pictures that moves. It's not like yeah. actually you. Yeah. It's just the, just one of those moving picture things that are all the kids are into these days. So magical. Speaking of all the kids, Kit, what's up? Okay, well we're about to move into our second series of today. We just saw Sai versus White Clan, and now we're going to move into the. This is probably one of the biggest matches of Group B. Uh, we're actually going to see the second player, or the second team, or the second place team against the third place team from last round. So let's actually head on over to the overlay and let's have a look at who they're going to be. Although if you've seen the previous games, you'll know. Okay, it's going to be fighting on the left hand. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, on the left, we do have IRK. Uh, they were second place last season. They did go six for one in the group stage. Unfortunately, in the no, sorry, uh, six for six for two, I think it was. Yeah, because they lost to White Clan, and then they uh, they beat. Wait, it would have been five two. Either way, uh, they did lose to White Clan twice at the end. They did lose to them in the playoff finals for round one, and they will be up against the third place match winner of uh, Group A, it's going to be Netwars, and Netwars also had a very strong showing last season. Yeah, never underestimate the power of a whole bunch of dudes in one country to just really like a game and play it a whole bunch. Netwars, yep. uh, besides being one of the uh, best sites to go to for Brood War for basically the last 20 years, um, they're, they're still doing it. These guys will actually never stop. Yeah, sorry, uh, Aggie just pointed out, and something that I got wrong last time, they lost, the two teams they lost to, the first one they lost to in the group stage was Naz, and that was the only team they lost to until the tiebreaker. So they beat both White and Soul in Group A, uh, Group B last time. So they had an insane showing, and a showing that I don't think a lot of people really expected from them, because they are a bunch of really old school players. But let's see how they can do against the Polish powerhouse here, of Net Wars. Now, just because uh, this is a new new series, if one of you wants to go through the maps again that we will be seeing in uh, in this game. Oh, we'll have to wait for the delay to hit, but sure. So we're going to be seeing Troy Triathlon. Hold on. <clears throat> we're going to be seeing Troy Triathlon, New Sniper Ridge, Hitchhiker, and Neo Electric Circuit. Troy Othalon. Troy Athlon, that's right. Should be a very, very cool match as uh, when we look at who's at what this wrong screen. So it's this one. No, it isn't. This is the right one. As you can see here, today's lineup for both teams IRK are going to be sending out favorite Norgrim, DeWalt, and Oyaji. And Netwall is going to be sending out Yeti, Trutaj, Kogut, and Radley as well. So Radley's actually going to be off racing today as Protoss. And uh, True Touch did replace Zero from the original lineup. Unfortunately, yeah, Zero I'm, was very busy with I'm always, BSL. I'm always sad when I see Netwars play and Zero is not on the roster. I uh, I always have a, a lot of respect for uh, casters who actually play the game, as uh, one of the uh, many casters who you know is not as not good enough to play on a roster like this. Uh, it's cool to see Zero out there, but I think True Touch is you know kind of. Yeah, a pretty good replacement if you have to, you know, dig way down deep in the power in the the pile of Polish brood war talent. Yep, and I mean, I also can say exactly the same thing because I'm nowhere near as good as Zero, and he does an incredible job. He obviously organizes the bombastic Star League that just finished with the finals. Uh, if you didn't see them, do check out the vods. It was a lot of fun. He casted those with Nyokan. And uh, yeah, I mean, check out all the bots on his channel, and he's looking to start organizing the Bombastic Star League 5 as well. So he is an incredibly hard worker. Just in the take a scene. vacation, Zero. Like, come on. 
You're gonna have one of those Bisous builds where you like play and the best in the world, and then you like burn out and have to go to the Bahamas for like two weeks to retain your mojo. So you know. Actually, he did go on holiday to the UK recently. Oh yeah, he did. Wait, really? Yeah. Did you guys hang out? No, no I didn't. I didn't even know he was going. <laughs> he... he secretly went. He didn't want to alert the dark He the was country. worried he was going to catch the failings from me, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he's not playing today. True Touch is uh, kind of filling in. But otherwise, this is like a super, super solid uh, Polish roster for Netwars. Yeah, I mean, both both teams setting up some of their best players. Now, let's have a look at who Alpha... Okay. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Let's hit the generate button again. Let's go back. As you can see, our first game is going to be a PvP again on Troy. And it's going to be between Favorite and Yeti. Now, Favorite did a pretty good job last round. Uh, he did go four wins and two losses. But Yeti, on the other hand, he went seven wins, two losses. That is insane. Yeah, Yeti's yeah, pretty incredible for us player. And yet he's actually 4 for 1 in PvP, so Favorite could have his work cut out for him here. Mm, Favorite's pretty good as well, so we should see maybe a good yeah. game here. Hopefully. Yeah, I watched uh, watched a really good game of Favorite versus this uh, foreign Zerg player one time, and he uh, mm -hmm. he looked pretty good there, so I uh, have a lot of faith in his, uh, his power and skill level just overall in general. Yeah, both of them really good. Now the map we are going to be moving on to, if you haven't seen this before, this is Troy. Now as you can see on the screen from the map image, there are four island bases which are blocked by minerals, so you do need to drop a worker there first. Uh, Terran can't just float a base there. And as you can see, there's all these assimilators everywhere. Now if you've not seen this map mechanic, uh, the way this works is if you do kill one of the assimilators, only small units like Zealots, Marines, and Zerglings can get through. And if you kill both, the only unit uh, which you barely ever see that can fit through is Ghost. Now, uh, they did actually use this again recently in the ASL map on ASL4 Gold Rush, uh, which you may have seen. But it does make for a very, very interesting map. And it'll be cool to see how both of the players play this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Also, you can't... Uh, you're cannot build the gas again once it's destroyed, so... Yeah, they're actually no stacked geysers, I think. That's the way they do that, but... It's a mechanic that doesn't appear very often if you think this map came out in... I believe it was 2008? Uh, I may be wrong on that. No, uh, you are correct. Yeah, it was a really cool map back in the day. There was some really crazy games. And in the... As you can see, there's actually four games on this already. There was even more than this, because... Uh, I did actually have this map in... The Clash of Char a couple of times, because it is one of my favorite maps, it's a lot of fun to play on, a lot of fun to watch. Now let's let's watch it, let's move on to the game and let's see how both of these players are going to play out this PvP. We haven't started the game though, there's a problem. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Let's start that first, then Cadenti can sort out the latency. We've got to work that, on our yeah. opening build order here. Yeah, I messed up my split there, my caster split. <laughs> okay, sweet, we're back in the game. Uh, so that means that we can like introduce our players and stuff, right? Yep, as soon as I bring it up on the screen, and here we go. Six, so starting in the upper right-hand corner in the orange uh, is our Protoss player playing for IRK, its favorite. And then here in the bottom left corner, in the white Protoss, it's Netwar's Yeti. You know, this is going to be an interesting matchup, as we did explain before. There was, uh, there was a, I mean, both of these players did an incredible job in round one. Uh, one of the, I think I've got the game sound off, which I'm about to fix, so don't worry about that, guys. Uh, but basically... Both of them did a crazy job. Yeti was one of the main ace players for Netwars. He actually did a very good job pulling them in to the playoffs, I think. Like, if it wasn't for Yeti and Tech, no, Tech was DM. Yeti just did an incredible job, even. Favorite did do very well in the games he played in. I'm just going to make sure the game sound is on. There we go. And, I mean, it looks like we're going to have a very early scout from Yeti here. Yeah. 
Maybe he's gonna go for a cannon rush in his opponent's main. Not if he doesn't he find his opponent's him. main really fast. Uh, there's a little bit of a timer on uh, cannon rushes, and I don't... Uh, he's gonna see these as similars and be like, oh, my opponent! But no, those are uh, actually neutral, so... Yeah, and as you can he see, they're know... defeated, so... I'll mind them. Unfortunate. So uh, yes. So, unfortunately, no cannon rushes. I'm a little bit sad, but uh, he's going to scout most likely correctly after this. Unless, uh, I know a lot of people do their scouting pattern as, uh, you know, close position, then cross position, then the last position on four player maps. But uh, I always think it's maybe a little bit uh, better to just scout, you know, close and then close again. But uh, he's going to scout, I guess, still even before his opponent does. And it's going to be Chaygate, though, against a uh, core again, so we might block him in his base again, like the like game the we previous saw last game. Series. Now, the, the one thing is that last game we did see the player that did get blocked in his base actually ended up with an incredible advantage, and then unfortunately misread the situation, I think, and suicided his army. So I don't think we'll see that from Favorite and Yeti here, both of them very, very strong players for their respective teams. We will have, of course, the core coming in for Favorite. Uh, meanwhile, Yeti is going to be the one going for the two game, so it should be kind of interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you do get locked in your base, obviously you're going to have to get out of there somehow, uh, which usually does involve shuttles, uh, unless you want to, you know, fire your uh, your probes out of a, one of those t-shirt cannons, get them back over across the wall. Uh, yes, so that means you're probably going into Reavers, but Reavers are one of those units that, like, depends on how good your control is. And uh, as we saw in the last time we saw Troy in game number one of our previous series, um, if your control is not very good, just having a whole lot of Dragoons is usually maybe a little bit better. The probe just easily uh, yeah. sits in the base. Yeah, I was... Blocking, like, for ages. I was so surprised about that. If I was a Korean <laughs> caster, I would be like, ah! <laughs> Yeah! But yeah, he got in the base there, he juked completely out of the way of the Zealot, that was so impressive to see, and he sees exactly what's coming for him. And Favor, it looks like he may be a little bit better def or better prepared for what's coming his way now. Uh, but is he going to be able to stop these three Zealots from killing one of the... Uh, one of the assimilators here? How is this probe still alive? Like, can we just watch that the whole game? But yeah, no, you're totally right, these Zealots, uh, besides just almost killing this Dragoon, you know, you gotta, gotta be careful about that. I don't think that they'll be able to kill Ooh, the assimilator nice uh, yeah, quickly enough oh, this time. I think last time it was like five zealots. Oh, he gets one of the zealots. He is, the zealots the look like they're actually gonna go down. The dragoons okay. getting pulled back at the last possible oh, really? second. Wait, what? Oh, I thought that this was gonna be a pretty easy hold, but then he loses a dragoon and a zealot? Like, that's a Either little bit way. rough. He gets a if he gets a probe here, that would be... Okay, he's not going to, but... Wow, that, uh, that, that was pretty effective. That was a great effective. hold, yeah. It looks like that probe in the bottom right of the, uh, of Yeti's base is going to get found by the first Dragoon of, uh, of Yeti here. Now, how is Favorite going to react to this? He's going DT. This is going to be pretty big. Like, DT's yeah, kill those Yeti's assimilators very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as soon as you kill the assimilators, if you've expanded outside of the assimilators to that close base, uh, which we see Fravert has, all of a sudden that's just totally segmented away and there's no way to help it, so that, uh, yeah, could be really, really effective. Although uh, the players are on the wrong way for that. But either way, uh, Reaver's going to be incredibly good on this map, of course, going for that early shotler is going to be good, as we saw last game as well on Troy, where you can take that very quick island if you do so choose to. And of course it does have less minerals, but it's going to be a lot easier to saturate. DTs actually do a lot of damage to buildings even, so if you can even do like a um, DT drop if they can't get in the front, you could maybe kill off the assimilators with the DTs really quickly. Well that's the other thing, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, because a lot of times you'll see players move most of their units out to their natural to defend, like you can see these two dragoons on the ramp. So if you drop DTs behind the army, kill off the assimilators, then the entire army can't get back into the main to defend. So. That can be a minor tragedy if that happens. Yeah, now are we going to see the Observatory? The Observatory's up, but is the Observer going to be ready on time? Uh, one thing I would like to point out is someone did say that this was the map that Draco beat um, Lava on in the Zotac Cup. Now, 
One thing I do want to just say is I did get in an argument with Sale when I picked this, but basically Zotac Cup asked me to help them pick the maps, and I picked the maps for both the tournaments, so I take part of the responsibility for Draco winning that, but oh look at this block by Yeti completely blocking and negating the CT from doing really too much. It only gets one of the uh, one of the Dragoons there, so... No, that was fantastic. I mean, that's exactly what you have to do, right? I mean, all it takes is one DT hiding somewhere random in your base, and you just have to, like, basically split your brain in half to both keep an eye on that and this giant army outside your base. Yeah, yeah but uh, Favorite does actually have an expansion way sooner than his opponent, and he does have three cannons, so he should be able to defend. Yeah, he should, yeah. and he's got Storm coming as well, so the longer this goes on, the harder it's going to be for... Um, for Yeti to really break this. Now Yeti is trying to go in. I'm not sure if he really assumes that he can break this. We could see a repeat of the previous game, but Yeti is so <laughs> far behind. Oh, but Storm is only halfway done. It is, but I don't think he really needs Storm no. cannons. Just do so much damage. I mean, and uh, I, I, fighting uphill is still like a little bit rough, like you're seeing right here. So three cannons on the top are going to be pretty good to defend. I actually thought that would be a little bit more dangerous for favorite than it was, but it turns out three cannons and high ground advantage are actually pretty good. Now, the one problem that favorite may have is both of his uh, both of his pylons are actually exposed at the front. Now, if Yeti had some units, maybe a Reaver that could make a, take advantage of this, he could take out the pylons, power and the cannons without really needing to do too much, but it looks like Although, if he does start in. shooting the pylons, it takes a long time, so he would just uh, probably put another one down behind them, so I'm not entirely yeah. convinced. Yeah, looks like there's no way you could kill two pylons with uh, with high ground advantage before another one could warp in behind them. But uh, yeah, I, I get your point. Yeah, it might be a small vulnerability. I'm actually just really impressed that we haven't seen either one of our players, uh, you know, really utilize drop tech uh, any uh, at all. I mean, I know it's been like a little bit of a tough um, situation so far, but especially if you're going to commit to going uh, for DTs and stuff. I mean, that can be a really great way to, you know, catch your opponent off while you're macroing on your side of the map. You know, we see Faber adding a lot of gateways on now. He's going, well, he's up four. He's adding on a cannon in his main as well. And he's adding on that plus one attack already. Now, what are we seeing? Do we even see a forge yet for Yeti? They're even on gateways. Uh, but Faber does have that slight probe advantage from having that earlier nexus. And both of their armies. Yeah. No forge similar. for Yeti. Yeah, Yeti will be able to get a shuttle out right now though and maybe take the island finally and get a um, small base advantage. Well, I, I don't know, I mean Storm is done and uh, right on time favorite is pushing out because he knows he has a uh, pretty big advantage here. I, I mean, I guess if you split your Dragoons and Zealots and stuff, maybe Storm isn't as effective, but I mean that's a little bit easier said than done. I think. Uh, Favorite actually has a, has a really strong army with Psy Storm. That said, if like the Psy Storms don't go off very well, then uh, yeah, it might not go too well for him. But he's got like one, and it's two, gonna be three, going up so, hill into the high he's ground. He's got four storms. I think it's five because he's got two on the full energy one. He's actually got two full oh, energy right. high templars now as well. So oh my god, that's gonna so be like an insane amount. But here we go. He's pushing up the ramp. The storm going Didn't down on Yeti's so. units. Oh, he's, he's, he's sniping the high, the high Templar. Templar! He sniped two, now three High Templar, and instantaneously Favorite has to run away. He has no detection with his entire army! I, I, I don't get it, like... He had an that... Observer, but I think it went down. He's actually storming, misses the DTs, and loses some more of his units, and this is a perfect oh counter by Yeti. What an amazing hold there by him, sniping the high energy High Templars first as well. That was a very pivotal moment in that game. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually insane. That means that, like, behind that, you could even maybe think about getting up a third base and just really, like, macro your and way out. Or... DT drop. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, but there's a cannon in the main, but as we know... Well, three DTs, so... There's three DTs, but they, like... they can, and, I mean, DTs just do so, so much damage. It looks like uh, Favorite's moving out again. He's got another Observer. I think his first Observer was there, but it went down. And uh, this is going to be the problem. So he, all of his units are now moving out on the map, and this could be such a big mistake. Yeah, his second observer is moving out as well, so he's not going to have any observers at home. As soon as this cannon falls, his nexus or whatever his opponent chooses to kill is going to fall some. 
Yeah, looks like he could actually lose the entire base. He needs to pull some units back. Here we go, LC on the minimap now. Does he pull back? It looks like he's not nervous. The probes have been pulled. But this cannon right, is going drop. down immediately. Yeah, even just with two DTs, they basically like two or three shot it. So uh, everything's going to die here. He's even like targeting down the Nexus. Oh, and he's going for a counter. Storm actually, yeah, it's, I, I don't think the storm's terrible, but it's not going to be, I think, enough uh, to stop this, uh, this army. Yeah, there's no one's going to push up into the high ground. Yeah, this yeah. is just taking a lot of damage here. He's not re Oh, he actually did defend again. Oh, no, he didn't. The Nexus is going to oh, go down. He has down. no detection here. Where is his robo? He should come down here and kill the assimilators. Lock in there. Yeah. Yeah, if he kills these assimilators, that's basically GG. Like, you can't get back in your realize, main. Though. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I... I think I maybe think he thinks the most obvious thing to do. Either way, Favorite is trying to hide a base in the bottom right now. This is what you have to do when you're behind. He's gonna lose his forge before plus two is finished. Oh, God. Yeah, that's actually terrible. And uh, this stops him building cannons as well. He does have his, uh, an observer back at home, so he's gonna get... Uh, control of his base again. Uh, if you had uh, killed both of these assimilators, Ooh, that would the absolutely DTs. be. They got past. Oh God, one of them can block the cap. Wait, why, why are they going down here to kill probes? Like, yeah, you either block it, like hold position, or you just kill the assimilators. But I mean, he was going for extra probe kills. I guess that's cool and everything. But those killing oh, those assimilators. The, base, the secret. Well, okay, he just he, he finds does. it, but he doesn't kill it. And then he walks away. No, wait. If you check his. If you check his vision, I don't think it was in vision, but here we go, he sees I, it now. I think it was. Like, this oh, he was waiting for it to finish. Favorite, oh, favorite oh, cancels oh, at the last millisecond. Yeah, it was very smart of him to wait for it to finish, but he, he didn't wait long enough. I, I think he's still actually in a pretty good spot right now. I mean, that's a lot All of the probes. I thought it was a reinforcing army, but it's actually, yeah, just probes went down, so that doesn't matter. Uh, the storms are also not incredible. And, and GG! Yeah.